Hi guys, Craig and Annette, Oz Camping. Uh, Annette and I have been talking about this video for a while. We weren't going to do it because um, we think it's familiar territory for a lot of people. But the questions have come up multiple times on the uh, owners groups and the user groups uh, about the gas system. So we've decided that we will cover it in a video. Um, so if it's not for you, that's fine. Um, but if you're, if you're still curious about the ins and outs of your gas system, then this video might be interesting. So you have two gas bottles. Um, I think in an earlier video we explained to you that we changed our nine kilo bottles for four kilo bottles. Uh, the reason for that is our, our thinking is you only need the second bottle as a reserve and it only needs to last long enough for you to fill your first bottle. So um, four kilo gas bottles last us about a month. Um, so it's not a problem. So the first thing with your gas system, you've got a little tap up here and it'll come in and show you that just above your regulators and that decides which bottle you're going to be using so I, what I do is I point the tap at the hose for the bottle that I want to use now the other bottle is off you don't want to be running them both at the same time otherwise when you run out of gas you are out of gas so one bottle at a time leave this one off turn this one on because that's the hose I'm using when this bottle runs out I can turn that off, point my tap at the other bottle and turn that bot bottle on and then this bottle can be filled sometime before this one runs out. So let me just go back to my current setup. When we arrive at camp we turn our bottle on and that's all we need to worry about. So come around this way. See if I can get Annette out of the sun. Um, with the gas installations, the regulations for your caravan state that uh, every appliance has to have its own shutoff tap, so your, its own shutoff valve or isolation valve. So underneath our hot water, there is one of those isolation valves. Some people get caught out with those, which way's on, which way's off. I'll show you a couple of photos, one with them on, one with it off, and then you'll know all about it. On our van, we have two isolation valves, one under the hot water and one around in the kitchen. The next common question that comes up about the gas installation is the hot water system. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video because anyone that's had a look at our previous videos knows We've done one on the basic use of the Truma hot water system and we've done a troubleshooting video. Both of those have good information on how to use the hot water system on gas. What I will say is that we mostly use our Truma hot water system on gas because we find that it's hotter on gas than it is on electricity. And we're also mostly off grid. So yes, we're using gas for that. The next one that comes up is the cooker. Now the cooker has some safety devices on it and some people have found that they have difficulty lighting it. So one of the first things is make sure that all your power points are on inside, all your, all your power switches, because up here, not on our model because it's a slightly older model, but on all the new ones there's a micro switch in here that's activated off this gas strut so that when you close the kitchen it cuts off the gas supply. So make sure all your switches are on inside. The next thing is that again with gas regulations every appliance has to have a flame safety device. Now what a flame safety device does is it simply turns off the gas flow if the flame goes out. So if I was to turn this this element here onto full you can't hear any gas flow. So that's the flame safety device doing its job. Now, if I press this in, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but if I press it in, you hear the gas flow. So that's how I light it. I need to turn it on. I usually go on to full, press it in, and then with another hand, light. Hold it in for a couple of seconds and then let it go. I'll show you again on this one, because if I let it go too soon, so I'm gonna press the button, hold it in, but I see how I let it go early and the flame went out. 
So I need to hold it in for a couple of seconds and the flame comes on. Now the other thing, let's just turn all these on. Turn, push, light, release. The other thing is with the safety switch here, if I close this, it's going to go out. The same way if I close this, the flame's going to go out. Okay, so those are your safety devices. Now bear in mind, it's nice to have safety devices, but if you don't open this up properly, or you don't open this up properly, or you haven't got your power switches turned on inside, you're going to have difficulty lighting this because of the safety devices. So one last thing on the gas is we have a bayonet fitting here for people to plug their barbecues into. Now there's a lot of debate about that. Um, the regulations state that if you plug something into this, it becomes part of the installation. And because it becomes part of the installation, it has to have a flame safety device. Most household barbecues don't have flame safety devices. There are a couple around, uh, Ziggy comes to mind, uh, that has a flame safety device. Weber does not, although they are working on one. So when we bring our Weber, to be perfectly compliant with the gas regulations, we run it off a separate gas bottle, okay? The moment we plug it into a bayonet fitting here, it becomes part of the gas installation and it's supposed to have a flame safety device. Now Weber are working on a flame safety device. Um, it hasn't been released yet, but when they do release it, we'll fit one up to our barbecue and we'll give you a review on that. Um, one thing we do on our gas fittings on our barbecue is from Bunnings, you can get these quick release fittings. And it's, you buy them in a packet, male end, female end, and you can attach them to your existing gas hoses. And it makes it nice and easy just to separate the hose from the barbecue, easier for transport, and also we have another gas bottle at home. If we want to use the barbecue, we can plug it in on that gas bottle. So I think that covers the gas installation. Um, thanks for watching, subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook as well, and uh, visit our website, ozcamping.au.